Hello guys, this is Lars and somebody wanted me to make a quick tutorial on how you use Remote Tech. Now we're going to play with Remote Tech version 2, which which is a really big improvement actually over uh, if, uh, over uh, version number 1. Now, the main thing you have to know about Remote Tech is that to be able to be um, to be able to communicate with mission control and fly like um, unmanned rovers or probes or anything, you need a connection back. So this is mission control, the red dot there. You you'll always see the red dot. Well, you could like turn it off somewhere here, I think. But no, no, the red dot. You you'll always see the red dot. Um. Anyhow, anyhow. Um. What you would need to do, the first thing you really need to do is get a, like, a small satellite network up and running. Now, uh, I usually recommend having like a, one small ring of satellites orbiting Kerbin just close by, which would uh, relate to each other with the Omni antennas. Uh, and the reason why you need this is that Mission control is not always available, but with the long range antennas, you can actually beam back to Kerbin from quite a far away. You can just target Kerbin and you'll get all those satellites, and whichever you actually point at, you're good. So, you, you'd like some relay satellites and then long range relays in perhaps just right outside of them with several of the long range ones. So um, let's have a look at, uh, at satellite design. Now we're going to need a command pod first of all because we need the first first um, the first set of satellites actually need to be manned or you can do it without them but yeah, I, I won't recommend it, because get doing it mad is so much easier and you don't really have to care about a lot of the problems you can get into. So, um, of course, if you have the, the... Let's see, there's supposed to be a command thingy here. Um, maybe it's under science. I haven't played with the higher level stuff. Uh, <laughs> cool. There's a lot of antennas, um, both... Uh, both in stock and in the remote tech stuff, but we, we won't use anything that's not stock or I don't think you need anything that's not stock really. Okay, um, never mind. The first thing I usually do is I um, I shoot up three satellites right away and uh, well, what do we need to get those satellites? Well, we do need the um, Let's see, we need the, um, the small engine, yeah, this one, this is the one I usually use. We might get away with just using these two or like these, but I usually u just use this one. It's good enough. Like the ISP difference here is, well, this actually has better ISP, so it's all good. And um, some of the small fuel tanks, yeah. Just a couple of these and a battery. I have tons of mods. This is actually from the same um, same installation as my modded series. So there's a lot of different mods here. Just uh, ignore them for now. And yes, yeah, so we have the battery. We have everything we need basically, and um, we need a probe thingy. I'll just use the stake Putnik for now because <clears throat> all the others, well, you'll get them eventually, but you don't have them early on. So, this is basically within tech level 3, 4, I think. 4, I think you need 4 to get to these tanks. You can use the big tanks too, it's, there's no problem doing that. But when I have the small ones, I tend to use them. So, this is just a simple, <coughs> sorry, simple um, thing here. We do have the Communitron 32, that's higher in the tech level though, so we'll use the Communitron 16. And what you need is just one of these, that's all you need to make it a satellite. Now, we do need, um, let's see, 
Man, there's so many items here. Um, yeah, of course. Um, we need a couple of solar panels. I'll just use the big ones here. Just two of those. Uh, again, they're further out in the tech level, but I I, I don't want to care about having like low um, low amounts of uh, power. Right now. No, wait. Let's actually actually pst, never mind. Let's use the um, what call it the. Um, Two by uh, one by sixes, yeah, yeah. Let's use those. This is going to look fugly, but hey, it's good. So this is a functional satellite. It has everything you need. There's one thing I do recommend that you get. That's the flight engineering stuff. That's a mod, and but it, it is actually a really good mod for this stuff because it enables you to first of all see the delta v of something, and uh, that's cool, I guess. But the important thing is you get to measure the orbital period, and that's going to be really important in just a second. Now I just take these, and I take the... Like, you could radially mount these, but uh, I prefer using the tricoupler. Where is... Oh, there's so many mod items. Can't find anything. Right, the tricoupler. Now this is huge, of course, so uh, maybe we uh, use one of the converters. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. This and... Uh, oh. uh, perhaps one of these, though. Just like this. And we'll put these on three-way symmetry and just like this. Now you have the three satellites you need to use. And you'll probably just manually decouple these by right clicking on. Okay, so I've shot myself up here into a weird ish orbit, right? So 175 by 300, and that's that's pretty good. So, um. And now we are still within sight of the. No, we're not. So, first round, you basically have to. Let's kind of wait this thing out. And the reason why we have this uh, asymmetric or uh, eccentric orbit is just because, well, we need to. We need to be able to do this while we're still able to see the Kerbal Space Center. Now, we are a couple of seconds away from Apple Apps. Let's enable this. We'll just activate it so we have contact. Let's decouple one, switch to it, and let's see, activate the engine, and the solar panels should be extended. Now, this might not have enough juice to work on the backside of the Earth Eye or Caribbean. I haven't really checked that, or I don't really care. Now, we want to get this to a 300 by 300 um, orbit. And we Got it a bit better there. And then, when we get it to the 300 by 300, just ish. And this isn't imp that important, just having that exact. Like, this is good. Now we are at 45, 47 and 3 quarters of a minute. That's our orbital period. And that's the important thing. And let's get back before it leaves. Now, because we want to sync them up, that's the things we want to sync. So, Let's try going another round. I don't think one round is enough. But what we want to do is get these around here so we have more co more co coverage so we can do unmanned things. So th these three won't be enough. We need an outer layer too, but this is just to give you the general idea of how this works. All right, so now we are almost within sight there. Um, we'll fix that, so there's really no worry. But for now, let's release another one. Get it quickly before it goes too far. 
activate the engine, I could just probably stage it, but I don't really trust the staging when it comes to these. For some reason, it always seems to like, fail. Right, so we want to burn ourselves up to... We actually want to catch up to this one just a bit. So we won't burn ourselves all the way to 300 in one go. We'll burn to probably 270 something. That will probably make it so we are actually just... Yeah, that's, that's the point we want. That's actually the profile we want on this one. Then we just burn ourselves to 37 and 3 quarters of a minute in the orbital period here. This one. 37.44, right? Yeah, I think it was. Let's just keep burning that up. We don't care about this too much. We care about this. And because when we match these, we make sure that they don't slide too much. We keep them in the same orbit. And now, a craft back here still has connection over to the um, space center. And um, if you watch my series, you could see me actually do some stationary, like a geo geostationary, geostationary, something. <laughs> and th that's basically because I wanted more stuff to bounce. So I made one, um, like, up here-ish and up here-ish, just at a much higher altitude, to have something to bounce, bounce the signal off from the space center. Right, so you can see here, now we can actually fire off another satellite, because we're still just barely in contact with this one. And... The best thing about this is that we're actually on the other side here, but it still works, which is kind of cool. Right, so the last one is here. Let's uh, get it there, decouple it, get into it, and get those and those, and let's try the staging. Yeah, that worked. Okay, cool. And let's have a look here. So we won't, now we just want to burn ourselves up to... Uh, the proper orbital period. And the orbital period is so important when you set these up, as I kind of explained. Yeah, it basically keeps them in phase, it keeps them in sync, so that you don't get any troubles with drifting. All right, so yeah, that's good enough. Like one second every six hours, basically. Well, not six hours, because, well, uh, one second every four to five minutes. It'll take a long while before you need to correct them, and as you can see, we still have like a kilometer a second of velocity change there so we're we're good now of course out here you're still able to bounce off either this one or this one at all points like no matter where you go you'll still have connection here the only problem is when they're set up so this one is over here none of them will actually see it they'll get back into connection quickly though so it shouldn't be any major problems and the next 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 time we actually shoot one up we should be able to to use the um, use a probe so this guy I should probably deorbit him but I won't care because it doesn't matter for this tutorial now if you like this stuff um, you might actually want to have a look at my hard mode series, uh, you'll find it on my channel, and uh, because I do play a lot with remote tech there, and there will be a lot more playing with remote tech, which is a really, really cool mod, so um, yeah, I'll see you guys around, bye!